Here's Newsreel Films presents exciting news. Is the divorce over? Are spirit and science tying the knot once more? Are the church and the laboratory saying the same thing? Out of the misty ages of antiquity, the quest for the divine and the quest for knowledge about the universe marched hand in hand. Ancient Sumer, there was a god of astronomy, a god of horticulture, a god of irrigation, and the temple priests were the scribes and technologists investigating these fields of knowledge. Ancient Greece, philosophers asking the questions of why are we here, developed the theory of the atom, celestial movement, and human ethics. Medieval Europe, the Western Church arose to a position of supreme power. Kingmaker, landowner, and purveyor of the truth, the Church took it upon themselves to be the one knower of everything. The dogma was law. Yet science had moved forward and now challenged the dogma that the Earth was the center of the universe. Copernicus, Bruno, and Galileo all felt the heavy hand of the church. The tragedy. Unable to suppress science anymore, the church and science divided up knowledge and human endeavor. Descartes invented dualism. The church had the unseen, science the seen, and materialism was born. An uneasy truce. Scientists were no longer being bound, and they reacted with a vengeance. All the unseen is fantasy, delusion. We are strictly little machines running in a predictable machine universe governed by strict immutable laws. The church pushed back. Soulless scientists were condemned to hell. Darwin countered. The creator is nothing, nowhere. We are random mutations, simply a carrier of TNA's relentless quest for more in a meaningless universe. And meanwhile, both science and religion were hitting the wall. If everything was mechanistic and God was the holy creator, then what were we humans supposed to do? Science dug ever deeper into a dead universe and stumbled upon and unlocked a mystery. In tiny corners of space and time, scientists found unfathomable energy and mind-numbing mysteries. Mysteries that suggest we are all connected, that the physical universe is essentially non-physical. Time and space are just constructs of this non-materialness. And today, renegade scientists are meeting with religious leaders. Conferences pushing forward a meeting of science and spirit are springing up as the 20th century blew open the doors of a mechanistic view. Will the 21st century blow down the iron wall between the church and laboratory? This is your Is News Real Reporter, signing off. deep and how far we want to go is really how far, how much do you want to discover about your true nature? Alice went down the rabbit hole where she met the Mad Hatter. Hatter was mad. And the idea was you want to get out of the rabbit hole after you've gone in. So there's two stages to science. There's, there's the crazy part where you go down the rabbit hole and then there's the, the part where you check the craziness of your ideas against a rigorous, strict, straitjacket-like process. I think the interesting thing about science, um, um, the interesting thing about physics, is that it is a genuinely new and novel way of trying to come to grips with the world. Um, um, I think the experimental method, which is important to physics, is a very different business from the method of revelation or the method of meditation um, or something like that. I don't think it's true that, for example, um, adherents of, say, Buddhism um, um, could imagine changing their beliefs based on the outcomes of, of some experiments people do with electrons. Why this apparent rift between the church and science, or between science and religion, emerged today? I think the roots of that are very deep, because it probably goes back to a conviction that some of the books of the scriptures, like the book of Genesis, which deals with the beginnings, is actually telling us about the origins of the world. Now, in fact, any biblical scholar will tell you, and this is not news, 
that the book of Genesis is not, was never meant to be about the origins of the world. But many churchmen believed that in the book of Genesis you had actual sort of uh, live news like CNN about the beginnings of creation. And therefore you had many people down through the ages like the famous Archbishop James Usher in Ireland in 1650 who calculated all the ages of the patriarchs back along and worked out to his own satisfaction that the creation of the world occurred in the year 4004 BC on the 17th of September at 9 o'clock in the morning. I think that there must be a scientific explanation for spirituality. I don't think there's been a good one until, until recently. To me, the only one that makes sense is that proto-consciousness, platonic values, goodness, truth, exist at this fundamental level of space-time geometry, which can influence our actions if we're open to them. And it interconnects us to all other beings, to the universe at large. It's told us that we're some sort of genetic mistake, that we have genes that use us basically to move on to the next generation and that we, we randomly mutate. It's said that we are outside of our universe, that we're alone, that we're separate, and that we're this sort of lonely mistake on a lonely planet in a lonely universe. And that informs our view of the world. It informs our view of ourselves. And we're now realizing that this view, this view of separateness, is one of the most destructive things. It's the thing that creates all the problems in the world. And we're now realizing that that paradigm is wrong, that we aren't separate. We are all one. We're all together. At the very nethermost element of our being, we are connected. And so we're under, trying to understand and absorb what are the implications of that. What does this really mean to me in my life? We need a new spiritual milieu. We need a new spiritual way of understanding the nature of what it is to be a human being. Because the old ways, the old mythologies, the old monarchy, king, god, versus the old lawful scientist way of doing everything, are dead. They need to be buried. We need a new realm, a new vision. And I think quantum physics, if anything, could help us get a step up in the right direction. I think the key aspect of the new paradigm, at least in medicine, which is my little piece, um, is that consciousness is real and has an impact. We have to go beyond our senses to create a new paradigm. It may very well be that what's going on inside of you, in your brain, in your nervous system, in your nature of observation, how memory works, how mind works, it may very well be that what is happening there is some kind of observer matter interrelationship, which is indeed making things real for you, affecting how you perceive reality. It's not changing the reality out there. It, you, you know, you're not changing big chairs and big trucks and bulldozers and rockets taking off. You're not changing those, no. But you're changing how you perceive things and maybe how you think about the things, how you feel about things, how you sense the world. The infinite information that the brain is processing every single second tells us that there's more to the world than we're perceiving. However, every single time we're immersed in an experience with our senses, seeing, smelling, tasting, feeling, as we're immersed centrally in our reality, we know nothing about reality and all of our sense of so-called reality out there is filtered through our sense organs. 